This is day one solving by factoring. We're going to be solving quadratic equations a good bit in this unit. And uh, what you'll need to know is that the solutions of a quadratic equation are also called roots. Uh, you might also hear the terms zeros and x-intercepts thrown, thrown around because if you look at the corresponding quadratic function, those are what represent your roots. Um, we use those in unit one. You'll also see the zero product property used today. That's if factors A and B have a product of zero, then either A has to equal zero or B will have to equal zero, and we'll use that a decent amount today. Looking at this first problem, 3x minus 12 equals zero, uh, I'm actually going to show um, how to solve it by factoring. Sometimes you can also solve by taking the square root, so I threw that in there. Um, let me first start by factoring. So factoring, I'm going to take out my greatest common factor, which is 3, and that leaves me with x squared minus 4. And you can actually start factoring whenever you've got equal equals 0. It must equal 0 if you're going to solve it by factoring. Now this can actually factor further. The x squared minus 4 is a difference of 2 squares, so 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. In this case I have three factors, 3, x minus 2, and x plus 2, multiplying to 0. What the zero product tells me about that is that if you have factors multiplying to 0, then at least one of them has to equal 0. In this situation, 3 is clearly not equal to 0. So either my x minus 2 is equal to 0, or my x plus 2 is equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. x minus 2 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. And I'm actually going to have two answers for this problem, that x is equal to 2. I added the 2 to the other side. Here I'll subtract it. And here x is equal to negative 2. And there's my two answers. We're finished. As an alternative on this problem, we could have done it by using a square root. Now, when can you use square root? It's when you do not have a bx term. If you don't have a x to the first power term, you can actually solve it by taking the square root. How you do that is a little different. You're actually going to go ahead and add this 12 to the other side. So 3x squared would equal 12 and divide by 3 now, so x squared is equal to 4. And then to undo the square on the x, you can take the plus or minus square root. So x is equal to the plus or minus square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, so x is equal to positive or negative 2, and that's actually the same answer as what we've got written on the left in pink there. So either method is just fine here when you do not have a bx term. When you do, for today, you're going to be relying on factoring. To show this process on the left. You can see on example two that this is a situation where we cannot use square root because of the minus 5x. The problem is already set equal to zero, so I'm going to solve this by factoring. Um, <clears throat> factoring will not work every single time. We're going to see situations where it will not work in the coming days. Um, What's going to now happen is I'm going to just simply factor this left side, looking for two numbers that multiply negative 24 and add the negative 5. So if I would actually write that out to the side here, negative 1 times 24 is not adding to negative 5. Negative 2 times 12 is not either. Uh, negative 3 times 8 adds to positive 5. So what I'm going to do is make it 3 and negative 8 is what I'm going to use. I don't need to do the grouping process since the leading coefficient here is a 1. So now I have my factors of x plus 3 and x minus 8 equal 0. Now that I've got it factored, um, x plus 3 being one factor, multiplying with the other factor of x minus 8 to equal 0, I know that one or both of those factors are equal to 0, so I'll go ahead and establish that x plus 3 is equal to 0, or x minus 8 is equal to 0. On the left one, I will subtract the 3 over, so x is equal to negative 3, or here I'll add 8, so x is equal to 8. There's my two answers, x equals negative 3, or x equals 8. What you would see here is if we would have graphed the function y equals x squared minus 5x minus 24, it would have had the zeros 
of negative 3, 0 and 8, 0 which is what we did in the last unit to solve this. So in, now what we're saying is you don't have to do the graph. You can actually just refer to factoring to figure out your answer. Uh, this problem is just way worse. It, I just don't like it, but you need to see it. Um, if you're going to try solving it by factoring first thing, get it equal to zero. Um, my tip and my advice is that you always want your x squared term positive. So instead of subtracting 30 to the left, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move these ter two terms to the right. I will do that by adding 8x squared over. So it will now be positive once I've added it to the right. I'll subtract the 46x over. And the 30 is positive over here, so I'm going to put plus 30. And now I'm set up to try to do this by factoring. You always want to check for greatest common factor. And in this case, there is one that can be divided out from all the terms, and that is 2. You can divide each of them by 2. So I'm actually going to show that. So divide by 2. And I'm going to divide both sides of the equation. Remember what you do to one side, you do to the other. And that 0 divided by 2 on the left is going to cancel out. So 0 equals 4x squared minus 23x plus 15. Looking for any, greatest com any other greatest common factors? There are not any. So now I have to go to factoring. I'm actually going to use factoring by grouping. I'll multiply the 4 with the 15. That is 60. Uh, I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to positive 60 and add to negative 23. That tells me they're going to both need to be negative. So negative 1 times negative 60 does not work. Negative 2 times negative 30 also does not work. That adds to negative 32. But when we get negative 3 times negative 20, that's our pair that will actually get this done for negative 23x. So 0 equals 4x squared minus 3x minus 20x plus 15. Now that I've gotten that minus 23x split up, I'll have 0 equals. My first group has a greatest common factor of x, which leaves me with 4x minus 3. On my second group, it has a greatest common factor of 5, but I'm going to use a factor of negative 5 on that one. So I'll have minus 5 times um, <clears throat> 4x because I divided out negative 5 and I'll have a minus 3 because 15 divided by negative 5 is negative 3. Uh, since the 4x minus 3's match I'll have my factors as x minus 5 and 4x minus 3. Now that I've got my factors multiplying each other and they are equal to 0 I am ready to set those factors equal to 0. So I'm jumping up to the left because I ran out of room x minus 5 equals 0, or 4x minus 3 equals 0. On the left one, uh, I'll add the 5. x is equal to 5. On the right one, I'll have to first add 3 to both sides, and then divide by 4. So I have two answers, x equals 5, or x is equal to 3 fourths. And I'm done. Here on example four, it's actually uh, undoing the process that we were just going through. Um, they're giving you what the roots are. So what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and say that x is equal to the negative two-thirds that they're giving me. And the other one is that x is equal to five. Now, to write the quadratic equation that's using these two roots, we've got to figure out what our factors are. And if you'll remember, the factors were always equal to zero. So to get this one on the right equal to 0, I'll, I will subtract 5 from both sides to make it x minus 5 equals 0. And x minus 5 is going to be one of my two factors. I know there's going to be two factors because there were two roots. Now on the left one, x equals negative 2 thirds. I'm going to add 2 thirds over. Actually, before I do that, you know what? I might go ahead and multiply both sides by 3 just to get rid of that denominator. I mean, no, no sense in dealing with a fraction if we don't have to, right? So 3x is equal to negative 2. Now, I'll add 2 to both sides to make it 3x minus 2 equals 0, and since it's equal to 0, that's my other factor. Now I know what my two factors are, and I'm going to say that my equation is 3x minus 2 times x minus 5 equals 0. Uh, usually, they like the answer to be in standard form, 
Um, so to do that, I'll just distribute this out at 3x. We'll be multiplying x minus 5, and so will minus 2. You could be using FOIL, that's fine. And this will be 3x squared minus 15x after distributing the 3x. And here I'll distribute the minus 2 to the x and to the negative 5. And that makes it plus 10 at the end. And now I'll combine my like terms. So my final answer is 3x squared minus 17x plus 10 equals 0. And we're done. Uh, here on this last problem, you can see where they've got a parabolic arch at the entrance of a building represented by height equals 9 minus x squared, and x is the horizontal difference from the center. might seem like that's actually something insane, but if you refer to the uh, movie The Hobbit, you can see the parabolic archways um, used in the structure of the Hobbit home, so actually it is a thing. Um, I just wanted to use an opportunity to nerd out there for a second. So um, right here, what I'm going to do is just kind of sketch it out really quick, where I've got my height axis, my x is my horizontal distance, and evidently there's my door that's a parabola shape, it says. Um, it, it's wanting to know how wide it is at ground level, so this distance right here. I'll need to know my two roots in order to see what the difference is between them on this problem. Um, and, it's, and if we're at ground level, I also know that the height is going to be zero of my door. So zero feet off the ground, ground level, equals nine minus x squared. And you can do this by factoring, but remember, this doesn't have a bx term. So we can actually solve this by uh, simply perhaps adding the x squared to the left. Remember how I like to have that positive? x squared equals 9. And now, instead of factoring, I'll just actually take the plus or minus root because there was no bx term. It's when there's a bx term that you can't do that. So x is equal to the positive or negative root of 9. So my two answers are positive or negative 3. And I would jump over here and say, all right, this is negative 3, this is positive 3. Now, how wide is the door at ground level? And the answer would be 6 feet. because this thing did say it was x was measured in feet.